so fast. Um, it's okay. It's really interesting how you guys are all connected, but kind of, you know, kind of different. You know, you were on Power Rangers, and you did a little bit on VR Troopers. VR Troopers, yeah. You know, um, uh, Michael, you were on VR Troopers, one of the main guys, which is awesome. Oh, and a uh, little steamed up, I saw your helmet, which is pretty cool. I wanted to ask, was that fan-made, or... From the set, or uh, I wish it was it? from the set, but it actually looks better than the one from the set. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It was, it was made by Anarchy Cosplay. Oh nice. Yeah, they do a lot of the Power Ranger helmets, uh -huh. so uh, yeah, they volunteered to do mine. So. Yeah. Oh awesome. Yeah, they hooked me up. Yeah, because I've uh, interviewed uh, quite a few other Power Rangers, and they've all said the same thing. But I still like to ask: Is there like I've heard of people taking stuff off set, Swiping but it. obviously, it's very frowned upon. But they're like. Uh, most of this is given to us by the fans, which I think is, you know, really cool to see them get that into it and dress up like you oh, guys yeah. and be willing to something that they spend all this time to make to give to you guys. Yeah, yeah. So, and then Tom. Yes. Thank you for coming. Um, you're uh, doing the villains that you got to do and the voices and all that stuff. How... How much fun was that seeing something that was a very, I feel with Power Rangers and you know, those and VR Troopers, those villains are very uh, unique and just very intricate and really cool and very imaginative. So being a part of something like that, how did that feel to making that character come to life? Well, that's the whole point. That's, that's the fun of it is giving every, I did a hundred characters in uh, Power Rangers. All together, um, but a lot of that was just <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. When they, when we were using the cheesy Japanese footage from the first two seasons, yeah, uh, just a lot of roaring and, and different monsters and stuff. But when I finally got to get my sink my teeth into a character that actually s spoke, uh, that was that was fun. And the more creative you had to be, the more fun, it, more challenge it was, the more fun it was. Um, sometimes, uh, I mean, people ask me to do. Uh, a certain character's voice. But when I did the voice originally, what they did was they took my voice, and then they pitched it up half an octave, and did both together so it sounds like a double voice. Oh. So no actual human being could ever do that voice again without that processing involved. I did not like, think uh, I think General Furio was like that in uh, Power Rangers. Um, and I think uh, Crabor. Oh, okay. They did that too. They processed it in some weird way, so it sounded different than that. because once you've done once you've done this voice, um, what is this voice? You know, uh, which was Debbie Mon. Uh, you kind of run the gamut of what they can record you and and make it sound different, unless they add some kind of special effect to it. So they did that a lot with my voices. Oh, nice. Yeah, because uh, you've done like a lot of like you did Street Fighter as well. General Bison. Yeah, I thought that was super. That was awesome. just my voice. That was my voice. I think that's like you know super cool, very iconic game, and I wasn't in the game. No, I know, but I'm saying that it's come that far, and that there's a game, there's movies, like there's so much to that. That that is such a big franchise. I mean, yeah, like thank you. That's what I was trying to look for. Sorry. Yeah, I I, I did Street Fighter Two. Okay. In which uh, actually had a plot, and you know, beginning, middle, and an end. And, and good guys and bad guys and everything was very clear cut. Other than, uh, uh, contrary to the games, which um, everything switched around so many times, and and it because it involved it was interactive and involved the players. The players were constantly trying to rise to the next level, and that became the goal. You know, and they didn't really care about how substantive the, their characters were. Yeah. You know, other than the substance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Die. Yeah. So doing the movie was fun. Nice. And uh, Carla, yes. so uh, being, for me, I'm a huge Power Rangers fan, being uh, the most iconic uh, villain that they've ever had in any of the shows and, you know, being this huge, like, uh, character, did you ever think when you first did that first episode that it would ever be this big? Absolutely not, no. When I first be uh, started playing Rita, I was just having a great time. I mean, she's just one of those characters you can just go all out with and just go over the top. 
So I just thought it was a really fun job and a, a great character to play, but never in the whole 25 years would, have have, would have, I have thought it would last that, that this long, 25 yeah. anniversary, 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So it amazes me just to think back on you know how long it's been and the different seasons and episodes they've had. It just keeps going and going in the new, movie, new movies. And every year they have a new um, set of toys that comes out. And even though Saban is no longer with the brand, Hasbro picked it up. So there's yeah. still, who knows, it's endless. It just keeps going and going. Yeah, and so no, I would have never, ever known it would have gone this far. Yeah, and then being a part of the original cast and it growing into what it's become, you know, and seeing, uh, you know, uh, what I was excited to talk about was Michael spinning off was their next was VR Troopers. Yeah. And seeing that as the evolution, like, it's it's so big and it's crazy to me of, like, I grew up with that. And when she said, when they came out 25 years ago, you're like, man, has it been that long? <laughs> it's and, been that long. And seeing the evolution in that and seeing where VR Troopers, yeah. you know, took on that role, I uh, kind of wanted to ask, um, Michael, how did it feel, you know, knowing what Power Rangers come from to start, you know, something different that they were going to make something new and it not be Power Rangers but still kind of similar? Uh, well, actually, I have a, a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> give me. Oh, there you go. But it's for Carla. Yes. So I, love this. I never thought of this question, but um, so you were on the set and you got to to hear the the actors talk and stuff yeah. when they're off camera. Yeah. What were they saying when VR Troopers moved in next door? Like, what, what was the, uh, what was the talk? Well, was there any like? Ugh. That's funny because um, I think our studio was right in between because um, the Saban Studios we had two stages: one where the Angel Grove and the high school, and then the Moon, which was my stage, and then you were in the next building, VR Troopers, and so. Every time you guys started filming, we would go out and just kind of look. And, what are they doing over there? It's and like who's the new kids that? in school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's like kind of like you know, you're so curious. What? Are, who are they? What do they play? Did they what feel are, threatened at are all? Are they robots? That's what What's I virtual wanted to reality? Do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Did they feel like we were taking their thunder at it all? It was or? kind of like that because we also remember. I remember when Sweet Valley High also yeah, came yeah, in. Yeah. In the same area, the same thing. All the guys would go and watch the girls because they were always in these little skimpy outfits. And then, how many uh, <laughs> seasons was did VR Troopers do? Two, two. Yeah, we, yeah. we shot ninety-two episodes. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember all the shows that came in. But it's just like the first day of school or something. Like, who are they? Are we gonna meet them? Are we ever gonna act with them? <laughs> so uh, the, one of the big things was between me coming on to VR Troopers, I was the only martial artist on on the sh on our cast. Oh, okay. And I was looking at Jason David Frank as oh. like, right, he's my competition. Yeah, because like, we, we both competed on the circuit, and so I was looking at him like, oh, he's the guy that oh, is, no you know, my counterpart on another show that I'm, I want to I want to take my martial arts level to, to his level and beyond. But like, did he, was he really like? Good. Did he visit uh, VR Troopers? Yeah, we, we oh, talked. Yeah, did, yeah, we hung yeah. out and talked I martial maybe arts he did and stuff. An episode or something, but no. No, we no. never. Like J Jason David Frank, as a lot of people know, was oh. supposed to be on VR Troopers, mm -hmm. and yeah. our char uh, the character on our show, Brad, was supposed, supposed to be on yeah. Power Rangers, oh. the White Ranger. But oh, uh, wow. but they switched. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't going to bring that up to tell you <laughs> if there was, like, kind of controversy. No, no, no. We've, Between the it, two? Could you, you the know, fans know about it more. Than, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I first heard about it from, like, the public. I didn't know. Yeah. Like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, I don't think Brad told me early on. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. My situation was a little weird because I had started off as a Zector girl. Really? At the, but but the, at the funny, I got both roles at the same time. Oh. So I auditioned for Arita. I didn't audition, I just got the role. It's a weird story, it's very long. But, and then I auditioned for Zector Girl. And then I was doing both simultaneously. And then um, after so many episodes, uh, Savon said, you can't do the Art Troopers anymore because Rita's too um, recognizable and they might know you're the same person. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. So they fired, well they didn't fire me, they just said, no, you gotta do Rita, and then I had a lot more um, 
episodes to do on uh, Power Wait, Rangers. Would they have paid you for both, or would it, would it have been like considered one, one job? Check. They were paying me for both, but <laughs> so, two, that two might have had check. something to do with it. Maybe they didn't want to pay me all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just, no, you got to pick one. They were, they were pretty tight for money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were like, no, 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 yeah. no. Yeah. So I, I, I stayed with Rita, which was probably a good move. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's very iconic. Yeah. Uh, Tom, I wanted to ask you, how did you get into voice acting? Um, when I graduated from UC Santa Cruz, I was a musician and an actor, and I kind of, and I had been so all my life, since the age of 10. Um, I finally chose acting and did Shakespeare for 15 years ending up at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. And then, uh, through kind of a fluke, I wound up back in L.A. where I was raised. And I was doing Shakespeare in L.A. at the Globe Theater, and the woman who was doing sound effects on the show said, could you come up to my studio and dub a part for me? Dubbing, by the way, is, is part of ADR, Automated Dialogue Replacement. Um, every time you dub a movie into another language, that's ADR. There are other kinds of ADR, too, like loop groups, a group of people who come in in post-production and do all the sound, the sounds of the crowds, or the sound of a party, or whatever is called for. Uh, anyway, ADR, uh, I said, well, I've never done that before, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah. And the very first gig I did, I said, you know, I, I, it, the script, the English script, this was a German miniseries we were doing, the script says uh, basically the same thing as what he's saying in German, but the lip sync is going to be awful. And she looked at me and said, well, I thought you've never done this before. I said, well, I haven't, but I can see it. And for some strange reason, I could just see lip sync. Um, and I rewrote the whole part. It was a, it was a four hour mini series called Wallenstein, which was a, a Prussian general. Uh, and I rewrote the whole part as I went. And I got like 98% wow. perfect lip sync. And for no reason that I can explain, I was just, I found my niche. I had been a musician and an actor all my life, as I said, and so I had, I was a drummer, a rock drummer. So I had rhythm and I could, I could see the lip flaps and I could, I started being able, being able, when you do ADR, you work with a time code, which runs along the bottom of the screen. And you use beeps, your headphones will go beep, 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 and then where the fourth beep would be is where you're supposed to start talking. And it's all hooked up to the time code. So I just found that, I, and the time code is, Hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. A frame is a thirtieth of a second. So it goes. I could read the frames. I don't know why. Wow. Yeah. So um, that's where I started, and that studio that I went to happened to be Intersound Studios, which was the production arm of Harmony Gold USA, and that was where all Japanese dubbed anime began, with Robotech in 1982. <laughs> and I was there, I was already a voice actor, I, by that time I was a director, because uh, a couple of months later I found myself being called upon to be a director of this stuff. Uh, and then Robotech came along and then yeah. I went from there, and I just sort of fell into it. I was at the right place, right time, uh, and started doing anime voices for the next 25 years. Wow. So that's how I got into it. Wow. That's, that's quite a career. Uh, yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm blown away. I've never done anything for 25 years. Yeah, that is so cool, especially how you just said it kind of just came to you and you just really ran with yeah, it. Yeah, I, I take no credit for it, which is a thing I could do. So. Did you ever want to get in front of the camera and do real acting? If you, like, oh, I've, do I've, I've done, I did a couple of films and TV, yeah. But uh, I was, the problem with, to really answer this question means, you have to look at the psychology of actors who want to be in front of a camera, which means that you have to be absolutely aware of your image all the time. You have to do headshots you know, and keep them current, and you have to look perfect for what they want. You know, you do a serious headshot, you do an evil headshot, and then you do a smiling headshot, and you, all that stuff. I, I just, I couldn't man up to that. I could not deal with being aware, having to be so conscious of my image all the time. Voice acting, you can go in and, you know, sneakers and, and tennis shorts and, and no shirt and do your job. You know, it seems like, oh, this is so easy. So, um, and then I became um, a director for 24 years, and that pretty much took up most of my time. I'm a director and a writer. I wrote about 1,000 uh, ADR scripts, the English versions of, for instance, uh, anybody know the show Gungrave? 
Yeah, I wrote all of Gungrave. I wrote all of it. Uh, Transformers, I was the head writer. Oh, Transformers. Um, Everyone knows Transformers. And, and others. I mean, it, the list goes on. But uh, I became just so involved with voice acting and directing and ADR and stuff like that. I didn't really have time to pursue a camera, on camera stuff. Yeah. I thought you might have missed it because you studied Shakespeare for what, 15 years, you said? Yeah. But no, I didn't study it. I, I did it. Oh, you did? Yeah. You did it. Yeah. You I didn't performed. miss it? In Oregon. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of blew it. I got so involved with what I was doing with, with voice and ADR and the money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did a show called Technoman. And Technoman, um, we, I did, it took a year to do. I had to edit it all. And then, and then we did it, and I cast it, and the casting director, and the head writer, and the director, uh, ADR director. And that took a year to do for Saban Entertainment. Then, the next year, UPN picked it up, because one of the executives at Saban moved to, to uh, UPN, and they, she wanted the show for UPN. Unfortunately, Saban had not done their homework on the copyright for the name of the hero, which was Blade. They found, oh. yeah, they found out that they could, they could use it, going. they could use it, but Saban International wasn't looking for action figures at the time. But when UPN picked it up, they wanted to do action figures. Well, for action figures, the name Blade was owned by Wesley Snipes yep. for the upcoming movies of the Blade movies. So they had to change his name. Now, he was called Blade because he was a technoman. And all the Technomen, all of which were evil, other than Blade, all had edged weapon names. Axe, sword, dagger, etc. <laughs> oh. So I said to the, the, the executives at UPM, well, you can change his name, but you have to make it an edged weapon. Yeah. What do they name him? Slade. Slade. <laughs> and I almost didn't do the second run of the show. I thought, that's, that's outrageous. That's your chasing the... So we had to redo it for UPN, all the dialogue with his name in it. And because of that, two of the actors that played the co-stars, uh, they said, oh, well, now it's for a network. We want more money. You don't tell Haim Saban that you want more money. Yeah. You just don't do that. You know how, how that goes. <laughs> yeah. So they got fired. So then we had two new actors doing those roles, and we had to replace all of their dialogue, oh. as well as everything with Blade in it. So that meant basically we had to redo the whole show. It took another year to do. And the money was just rolling in. I mean, three grand a week back back then was a lot of money. That was a fortune back then. Uh, but anyway, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> I was just asking you if you missed acting. Oh yes, oh yes. And I was about no, to say because of all, though. because of that, that that money thing. I was making, I was making a lot of money. I mean, if I wanted to be a regional theater actor again, like I, that was my only goal in life before I came back to LA in '82, was to be a regional theater actor for the rest of my life, you know, and join Actors Equity, you know, make a you know, thousand or twelve hundred a week for the rest of my life doing equity, doing regional theater, and that was my passion, was stage. The difference between stage. And anything else is that you do some, you put, you record your voice for for anime, and it's done. It's etched in stone. It will never change. For stage, every time you go on stage, even if you're doing a run of 800 shows of Hamlet, and I played Claudius in Hamlet 800 times uh, over the course of my Shakespearean career, every night was different, different audience, different chemistry. Just everything is different when you're doing stage. Every single time you do it, and that is. It, it allows for a creative flow that you can't match by uh, doing recorded voices. But I kind of shoved that aside, so well, I can't do that anymore. I'm doing this now. And mm -hmm. I'm getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting paid well, so. Michael, I had a uh, doing a Tony Braxton music uh, video. Oh, you were in the Tony yeah. Braxton video. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. Because um, you were the, uh, as a love interest. Yeah, right? I, I, I played her boyfriend in the yeah. video. Uh, Were you the one in the shower? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to remember that one. <laughs> we can tell what her favorite part I mean, was. I took a shower, but it wasn't in front of the camera. <laughs> there was a one where she was in the Why? shower with some guy. Did somebody see me in the shower? Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's something I don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> You're recording me the whole time. Yeah. Uh, it was more fun how I got the, the gig 
than actually filming it. I mean, it was exciting because it was one of my first big roles yeah. that I that I got. I did some because I really originally went out there talking about self image. I, I went out there because my mom pushed me to get into modeling. You know, oh, you know, wow. kind of how mom moms are. Oh, you're, yeah, so, you're so handsome, you should be a model. <laughs> and uh, so I got out there trying to do modeling. Then I I got pushed into acting, did some commercials and print work. But uh, Tony Braxton was the first like real video gig or film gig that I did. And uh, the way I got it was I did a Head and Shoulders commercial, and Tony Braxton saw me on TV and said, I want that guy in my video. Wow. So I got a call at 2 in the morning from my manager saying, Tony Braxton wants you in her music video. She wants to fly you off to, to Miami tomorrow morning. And I was like, really? <laughs> wow. Tony, who's he? Tony. Tony. At the time, it was I didn't know who Tony Braxton was. <laughs> I felt stupid afterwards. Like I didn't know she was that big, but it was like her s second or third big hit single. Yeah. You mean the world to me? So anyway, uh, yeah, they flew me out there, and it was a two-day shoot, and it was fantastic, and I had a blast. So, yeah. I love that you owed all the Head and Shoulders. Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> and I was drinking coffee in the Head and Shoulders commercial. This is all I was doing. <laughs> That's it. No, uh, yeah, she just, head. <laughs> yeah, no, no scratchy dander. Yeah, you like, didn't have the dandruff on your shoulder? Like, I'm good. I'm looking pretty good. <laughs> so, um... Uh, Carla, you're working on a new uh, a new project, right? It is uh, false. Uh, what is it called? Sorry, um, false aver. Um, sorry, you gonna help him? Uh, <laughs> I know you're working on a new I'm project. Trying, well, you know, I I've done two, but one of them the title changed. What was it? Oh, false affairs. You're talking about false Thank affairs, you. okay? That's it. Um, I what? don't know what happened to that. We were planned to um, start filming, but we haven't filmed yet, so oh, okay. I really can't say much about it. I know it's still on um, I, I, D, um, uh, I, uh, IMDb. Is this a series or a yeah. movie or what? It's a movie. Yeah, they have all the actors, but for some reason there's something... It just keeps falling through. Yeah, there's a big holdup, but I have a, I'm not sure. I can't say if it's going to go through or not. But I always wondered how that was like you know because i know a lot of behind the scenes stuff has got to be pretty crazy with it's crazy holding up oh, and yeah. keeping you on hold and all that yeah. kind of stuff oh, yeah. so. oh, yeah. That's bad. oh we got about 10 minutes oh. i wanted to open it up for okay. questions for the last 10 minutes does anybody have any questions for anyone so this one's for you michael what do you think the rights of br troopers is right now do you think it's with hash bro the rights? Yeah, like the rights to the franchise. Oh, for like, to, to be able to sell the toys and everything uh, like yeah. that? Um, I don't really have an opinion on it. I, I don't know who has the rights right now. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I know about that whole like ownership of the franchise is that it's, they, had a, they had a different toy manufacturer. We don't get royalties or residuals for oh, the toys okay. they sell. And our show got canceled because they didn't sell enough toys. Mm -hmm. So that's all I know about the, the, the whole toy man. And that Saban made billions of dollars off oh, of the beer toys. The, yeah, the Power Rangers. And, but weren't uh, the toys by um, Bandai also? No. Well, the Power was Ranger was toys were by Bandai, Bandai, and then we were Mattel, I think? Mattel. Oh, so it is. No, a no not, was it Mattel? Yeah, I think it was Mattel mm -hmm. that, that did. Uh, VR Troopers. They decided to go with a different toy manufacturer. Oh, okay. Nice. And, and the coolest thing I think ever is that I have an action figure with my face on it. Wow. That's, that's pretty awesome. But it's oh, the so bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am a bobblehead. But, you know, the toy is cooler. It's got abs and everything. <laughs> I uh, yeah. yeah, it's a really rare action figure and I, I haven't even been able to find it online. People, uh, A friend of mine from Alaska sent me one. So wow, that's, the only wow. way, that's the only reason why I have one. Wow, but I could never find it online or in a toy store. So, yeah. That would be pretty cool to that's have. Pretty like, yeah. I got an action figure. <laughs> you see that sit step? I don't want to take off my shirt, but it's still there. <laughs> exactly. They model it off my real body. Exactly. Speaking of which, if anybody knows where to find a, a, the uh, action figure of Rakio from Dinosaurs. 
Come see me at my table. I'm willing to pay for that. I know it is cool. Sometimes you'll, you'll find them. Yeah, you'll find them here where like guys are like, oh, I've been digging, knowing that you guys are going to be here and mm -hmm. finding obscure toys, which is really cool. Hopefully, finding something like that would be awesome. The action figure of Rakrio weighs 13 pounds. Oh my goodness. It's made out of metal and it's this giant brontosaurus. The box is this big. It's a model of a, of a brontosaurus that transforms into a robot. It's amazing. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. Did anybody? Yeah. Good question, Carla. What did you think of the Power Ranger movie? Oh gosh. Um, at first, I wasn't too sure of it when you know the pre previews and the trailers came out because the costume threw me off and all that. Uh -huh. so, but I went and watched it, and I was pleasantly surprised. I liked it. Um, it was very different. It actually had a backstory for Rita and. Yeah. Um, I still think they should have made Rita a little bit more OG, like maybe a little glimpses of the original Rita. Yeah, I thought that you so said awesome. that because I felt the same yeah, way. Yeah. I was like, man. Cause that was probably the only thing missing for me. I wish um, she would have been more, you know, just a glimpse of the original. But Something a little. Yeah. I'm not saying it had to be the same thing. Yeah, but yeah. She is. A, like like with the, the costume that she first came out with when they found her in the ocean and she, um, the brown outfit. Yeah. Kind of look more oh, Reedish a little, but or still, even, I didn't get enough of that. That or even if they would have done that where they first found her and she looked more yeah, like more exactly. outfit. That yeah. would have been really cool because it would have been Maybe like she had like homage. gray hair, yeah. you know, right. or something. That would have been pretty cool. I would have liked yeah. that. Anyone else? Yeah. So to all the subsect, how long did it take you to get into that outfit when you were shooting the show? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we had a call time at 7, and I had to be there by 4.30 to start makeup by 5. Oh, wow. So it was crazy. It was like two hours. Sometimes go over two hours. Um, that was in the beginning when I had to wear uh, the wrinkles because I had to put on um, the latex and everything. to. Because at the time, I was a lot younger than Bandora, the original one. And so they aged me. They had to age me. And then they wrote in that I became young. So, you know, they took about another... 30 minutes off of my time, but otherwise, it, it was a process, because you had to put the makeup, and then the whole costume was heavy, then they had just the headpiece, and there was a petticoat, and that big old weird chest piece I was wearing, and then the collar, so it took a while, yeah. It didn't look, <laughs> it didn't look light, that No, outfit. it wasn't light, because that outfit was original from the, the 80s show in Japan, Super Sentai, where um, at that time the material for costumes was not the lightweight foam they have now. It was like a, a heavy, dense rubber metal type of stuff. So oh, it was heavy, heavy. Did you ever fall? Many when, times. Yeah. Many <laughs> times. I fell. That's, what I that's what I would be afraid of. In any of that, you're like. I was always falling because it was just like you know because you had to be very physical. You had to oh, pick yeah. up the staff was heavy, almost like a twenty pound staff. It, it was metal and rubber, and so I had to pick it up and. Sometimes if I didn't move right, I would wipe it, wipe, wipe out. Luckily, well, I was I filming with a lot of stuff. I went myself to her earlier, uh -huh. and you know, she was like, "If you give me a hard question, I'm gonna hit you upside the head <laughs> with the staff." So I got a little staff. afraid. So that's why I've been a little timid, you know, you know today. So it makes sense. That's why. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? No. No. What's your favorite episode? Oh gosh, I have several, but I. The ones that are at the top is probably the wedding. The wedding is my one of my favorites, and then even though it's a little bittersweet, as the countdown to destruction. Yeah, that was fun too. That was fun episodes. Did you ever think Power Rangers would be going on still 25 years later? Absolutely not. No, not at all. Because it was just fun. It was, we just had a good time filming it. You didn't think of that stuff. And um, as far as I remember back then. Children's shows didn't last that long, and for Power Rangers, it's just the first time I think it's ever last. Any ch children's show lasts that long. Aside I can make from a, a comment about that. I'm except not, aside from like Sesame Street and all that, but uh, when uh, I was there as I was employed by Saban as a writer and a director and a voice actor, uh, when Haim and Juki came up with this idea, and he, they called all the directors and production staff into a conference room and threw two magazines down on the table. One was Steven Spielberg superimposed over the T-Rex from uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. And oh, the other one was the Japanese fan mag of Power Rangers. 
And I threw them down on the table and said, we are going to combine these two and make a gazillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and oh that's God. why it's still being produced in New Zealand. I mean, it's an unstoppable It's unstoppable. Force. Yeah. It's I mean, nature now. you know, they have all the reboots, the new movies, uh, yeah. the new toys. Yeah. Yeah. And they're on Netflix, because I love it, it's on Netflix. Cause yeah, you have You can watch all episodes. of them. Oh, like with myself, I, I told my kids, oh, I used to watch this with my sister, because it was on when we were young, and yeah. we used to fight and everything, and like, Power Rangers, and now I'm watching with my boys, and it's so exciting. Yeah, that's so cool. I have one uh, last question. It's one of my favorites to ask, and it's kind of just, it's a little weird, but in a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> you know, world, what would be your weapon of choice, no gun? A bat with barbed wire all over it. Oh, no, so just kidding. Yeah. walking dead fan. I'm I like just it. kidding. Because we had I some love very that show, interesting, though. one time uh, somebody had told me they'd use an ice cream scoop, which was... Uh, very weird. <laughs> like, you get some random answers, so it's really fun just to get an insight of Here's what some would be. dirt. Yeah. <laughs> that, I was thinking going for the eyeballs, but I didn't know for sure. the eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of what I thought. But we always like to hear you guys' answers. Uh, I'd have to go with a lightsaber. Lightsaber. Oh, yeah, man. That is phenomenal. Mm. I know. I was going to say, I love that shirt. That is a phenomenal cool. shirt. I would agree. Lightsaber. <laughs> I mean, well, some, well, some it's the ultimate of, weapon. Some kind of electronic beam of one sort or another. Yeah. Uh, oh, not, who, who knows what will actually happen in the future for weapons like that? Yeah. But you know, some kind of ray gun yeah. is an old term. Yeah. But yeah, that, you know, that's a good distance. Uh, keep them, you know, keep them at bay weapon. Yeah, or like a samurai sword. Well, yeah. Yeah. Gotten that one a lot. Too, yeah. that, too much training, too much exercise. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I want a beam of light that I can pull. <laughs> yeah, and just exactly. Way too much work. Yeah, you don't want to uh -huh. injure yourself. Right. So that repetitive yeah. stress. Okay, I got a couple more minutes. So, uh, do you guys have a favorite superhero? And if so, do you have a favorite villain? Because it's fun to see between the two. Well, since I was a little girl, I loved Wonder Woman. I mean, oh. the Linda Carter Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was my all time favorite. What about you being a villain? Who would be your favorite villain? A Rita. Oh, okay, I didn't know if it would Come be on, that. Okay, or if you pulled that. inspiration from another one. Yeah, no, I like that. No, she does remind me of Maleficent, though. I like Oh, Maleficent. definitely. Yeah. I could see the yeah. uh, similarity between yeah. the two. Um, I'm kind of lucky that uh, I'm in an industry now where, um, so, quick little story. So, uh, after VR Troopers, I, I fell out of acting because I just couldn't get a any acting work because of my look. <coughs> a, lot of, a lot of people couldn't tell what ethnicity I was, so they couldn't typecast me in a particular part. Well, anyway. Long road between multiple careers, and I ended up as a, uh, an animator for video games. I also did some films. And because of this question you just brought up, um, the company I used to work for was Telltale Games, and they just went out of business. So I worked on their Batman and Guardians of the Galaxy, all, all really cool, cool IPs. Yeah. And just yesterday, mm -hmm. I, I got a job with uh, a company in LA, LA that's doing Marvel Strike Force. So I, get to, so I get to animate all wow. of the Marvel characters. That's that is, so cool. And one of my favorites yeah. is, that is, is uh, Deadpool and uh, oh, yeah. and Iron Man. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah. those oh, are my two five. Yeah. There's yeah. such wonderful humor. Yeah, oh, I like the snipiness. Oh, it's yeah, great. So He's a, a very fun character and really easy to you know bring to life and yeah. you know in that kind of. Yeah. It's fun. So I get to work with a whole Marvel oh, universe. Man, I'm so excited. Like all yeah. my favorite superheroes, all you know, Scott Page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good yeah. man. Yeah. Um, and, and answer to your question, I would say that my favorite superhero is not actually a superhero. It would be because uh, I was recently asked online, uh, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who's the director of Cowboy Bebop and and Wolf's Reign, uh, she put out, out, "What is your favorite uh, hero and your favorite villain?" And I said, "D'Artagnan was my favorite hero." from Three Musketeers. Ooh. And my favorite villain was Grendel from Beowulf. Oh. Mm. Not heard those yet, I like that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you guys so much. Great. Sorry it took so long to start, you know. But okay. Good, good, good panel, good yeah. panel. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, for, Thanks for the great questions. Thank yeah. you for the great questions. I have not asked the same for a little bit. Very good, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are welcome. I think you guys are doing, are you guys doing it?